Sunday, January 14, 1973, the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. dynamic rhythms of Super Bowl VII offered an interesting contrast. The enthusiastic Washington Redskins and the somber Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins were up from hard times. Born in expansion, they had struggled through four lean years of defeat while searching for strong-willed leadership. Then along came Don Shula. Shula had proven himself a winner in Baltimore, but a Super Bowl loss soured his Colt career. Now he would shape a new team to match his own square-jawed toughness. I'm about as subtle as a punch in the face, he said of his coaching method, and quickly the ragtag Dolphins fell into line. In just two years, Shula took his team from cellar to Super Bowl. Against the Dallas Cowboys, Miami took the field coolly confident and left it two hours later thoroughly beaten. Don Shula had suffered his second super put-down, but he silently vowed that he wouldn't lose again. In 1972, led by an anonymous defense called No Name, Miami won 16 straight games, yet did so without celebration. They knew 16 in a row meant nothing without victory in the 17th. Blocking Miami's path were the Washington Redskins, another team with a checkered past. For 20 years, the Redskins had been scrimmage fodder for league champions, a perennial loser also in search of leadership. In this case, George Allen. Allen was Shula's antithesis, encouraging, cheerleading, cajoling, pleading, blending revitalized old Redskins with spirited new additions. Like Shula, Allen created a team in his own image, the Over the Hill Gang. Under Allen, Washington won the first Redskin division championship in history, then ascended to the top of the NFC. In just two years, Allen had performed a Shuler-sized miracle, and now he took time to celebrate. In the joy of the moment, the Redskins nearly forgot that one step still remained. Super Bowl VII would match more than bodies and game plans. It would test the strength of two clearly defined team personalities and the methods of two men who had shaped them. The computerized no-names and the romanticized over-the-hill gang. On this powder blue Sunday, the aqua white dolphins would attempt to settle a score which had haunted them for one year. The burgundy gold redskins would try to ride home on the emotional backwash of their sudden rise to power. Two teams out of a shadowy past to share this moment in the Super Bowl sun. Probing eye of a nation focused in on a nine-inch strip of Coliseum turf, control of which would determine the game's outcome. In the
the first quarter, the confrontation was no contest as up and down the line, the Dolphins took root and controlled scrimmage. The heart and soul of Washington ground power, Larry Brown, was confronted with a wall of red, his own blockers forming the barrier. While Miami stopped the Redskin attack in the middle, number 32 Jack Pardee in the Washington defense sought to control the outside game. To do this, they keyed Miami's superb pulling guard, Larry Little, number 66. Pardee's first move on a sweep was to pick off Little and let the runner go free. Stripped of his escort, even big back Larry Zonka could be handled by tiny cornerback Pat Fisher and his quick feet. The no-names were brilliant, but Pardee's over-the-hill gang matched them throughout a bruising first quarter. Faced with a defensive stalemate, the Dolphins turned to a different tact. A Bob Greasy to Paul Warfield pass is no surprise, except when delivered on first down. The out-of-character maneuver netted 18 yards and provided Greasy with field position to test the nemesis of his running game, Pat Fisher. Greasy sent Howard Twilley to the corner and delivered a perfect pass, just over a leaping linebacker and outside a beaten Fisher. Miami accepted the game's first score with typical reserve, but the two quick strikes had split open a defensive standoff and Washington surrendered the first small measure of psychological advantage. No name returned determined to hold the newly forged lead. Their method would be the 53 defense, with Manny Fernandez settling head up over center and using his quickness to nearly beat Redskin backs to the handoff. The purpose of 53 was to predetermine Bill Kilmer's play calling, to set up the ball hawks of Miami's deep zone, to force Kilmer into third and long situations, to test his arm early and often. Kilmer's third down pass had been intended for number 42, Charlie Taylor. But he found the middle crowded with Dolphins, and Jake Scott pulled off a single-handed steal. The Dolphin defense had called the shots, taken the ball from a frustrated quarterback, and given it to a confident one. A fake pitch on second and two fooled the run-conscious Redskins again. And once more, it was Pat Fisher who got burned this time by Paul Warfield. But after 20 minutes of perfect football, Miami had at last proved fallible. An illegal procedure penalty wiped out Warfield's touchdown. The setback might have caused a letdown, but middle linebacker Nick Bonaconte recalled the pain of a previous Super Bowl too vividly. The Dallas Cowboys had destroyed Miami in Super Bowl VI with cutback running. The Dolphins knew Larry Brown would test them with the same tactic. This year, they were ready. The Dolphins had drilled on maintaining precise pursuit angles, sealing off every avenue of escape, front and back. This was team defense. Each man's course coordinated with a teammate's. Eleven men on eleven paths of pursuit, all with one mission. Seek out Larry Brown and punish him. Once again, Miami had forced Washington's hand, 
With two minutes left in the half, Bonaconte sent Doug Swift in on a blitz, then dropped to the middle and waited. Bonaconte's interception told the whole first half story. Miami's cold persona had extinguished the fires of redskin spirit. Larry Brown had been dealt a game's worth of pain in just one half. George Allen's enthusiasm had turned to nervousness. Calmly, Manny Fernandez and Don Shula looked on as Miami offense secured the vantage ground. Jim Mandage came up with Greasy's sixth completion in six attempts. And then number 39, Larry Zonka, led number 21, Jim Kick, to a sliver of end zone daylight. And the half of Dolphin domination ended 14-0. <laughs> Washington fans welcomed their stricken team back from intermission with a purpose. Emotion had brought them this far. Emotion could save them now. About every damn guy in here now. Everybody listen to this. We got 30 minutes to live. We've talked about character. We're going to see how much character every damn guy has here. Now let's hit somebody. And let's be proud of ourselves and be physical. First series on offense, first, first series, series on defense. defense. Allen's oratory brought back the fire. And Kilmer came out swinging with an aggressive outside passing attack. Redskin receivers ran short outs underneath the Dolphin zone, and finally, Washington mounted a drive. With six carefully structured completions, Kilmer took his team the length of the field right up the touchdown's door. When it counted most, Redskin execution had faulted. Charlie Taylor was open for an instant, but stumbled just before the ball arrived. Still, Washington had one down left to recapture the emotional momentum which had brought them this far. Once again, Manny Fernandez assumed the role of spoiler. With hope for a touchdown buried beneath massive number 75, the Redskins would have to settle for three points on a Kurt Knight chip shot from the 25. But even this was not to be. Washington's most important drive had yielded nothing. The frenzied burst had withered as quickly as it had flared, and George Allen's 30 minutes to live was now down to 21. While despondent Bill Kilmer cooled his heels, calculating Bob Greasy moved in for the kill. But the determined redskin defense had already caught his act, and the element of surprise had flown. With the air attack becoming more hazardous, Miami turned to its broad background soldiers to put the game away. Zonka and Little had failed with sweeps in the first half, so now they turned to their brutally basic inside game, pounding away from tackle to tackle for short, savage games. Each Zonka blow softened Washington resistance, then one play battered it into full retreat. Zonka's rambunctious 49-yard run seemed to settle the issue. All that remained was another pinpoint greasy touchdown pass. But number 23, Brick Owens, had a different idea. Owens' interception with eight minutes left gave Washington one more chance. One more chance for Larry Brown's aching legs to summon up lost power. 
One more chance for the offense to atone for three quarters of failure. This was Bill Kilmer's kind of game. Tough, brawling, rough hewn, but crudely effective. Helmet askew, belly protruding, socks sagging around his ankles, Kilmer was once again spiritual leader of the Redskins. Jerry Smith was wide open, but the ball never arrived. For between Kilmer and his receiver loomed yet another trick of the guards, the goalposts. Bill Kilmer's fate had been predestined, and on the next play, Miami sealed it for good. Jake Scott's second interception put the game in proper perspective. It had been a day of defense, Miami team defense. A defense intentionally constructed by Don Schuler without stars, for each no name is part and parcel of a whole. But one man had stepped out of obscurity. Manny Fernandez fulfilled the lineman's dream by dominating the most important game of his life. Fittingly, this regal day of defense was crowned with Scott's interception, and Miami had all but secured the first shutout in Super Bowl history. remaining in the football game. A field goal here should ice it for the Dolphins. Yepremian's attempt will be from 34. Here's the snap. The kick is up. It's blocked. The football is loose. Yepremian's after it. He picks it up. What's he going to do? He's trying to throw it. The ball is batted up in the air. Picked off by the Redskins. Mike Fast down the sidelines. He should go all the way. Damn! What an incredible turn of events. Let me see if I can reconstruct what happened. Yepremian's field goal was low into the line. The kick was blocked. The ball popped loose. Garrow finally found the handle, and then he tried to throw a pass. His arm went forward. The ball didn't. Garrow batted it up in the air like a volleyball, and Mike Bass of the Redskins picked it off all the way down the sidelines for a Redskins touchdown. Suddenly, Washington is right back in the ball game. It's 14-7 with plenty of time remaining. We got a lot of time. A lot of time. A lot of time left. Morris on a sweep to the right. He's brought down by Pat Fisher. The official rules that he's out of bounds. The clock is stopped. 151 remaining, second down and six. Bob Creasy drops back to pass. A dangerous maneuver deep in their own territory. It's complete to Paul Warfield. It looks like he has the first down. A big first down with 145 remaining. And somehow the Redskins have to get that football. Now we got to think in terms of taking that ball away. See, taking that ball away. Make the tackle, but the second guy go for the ball. <laughs> The Redskins have to use up a vital timeout. It's third down and seven at the Miami 33. Uh, where, what yard line? I turn for kick. Morris again on a sweep to the right. It looks like he has some running room. Oh, he slips and falls. Down he goes. And now the Dolphins will have to punt. Play situations. Let's go. The Redskins are in a 10-man front. Here's the snap. And here comes the Army. Barely gets it away. Now listen, yeah, this is a world championship. The 1972 season has come down to a final minute and nine seconds. Oh, now 
Let's go, let's go, Billy Cowboy, come on, buddy! Yes! Gilbert yes! drops back to pass. He throws. It's into the Washington bench area. Nowhere near an intended receiver. Hey, Kilmer! Got a boy, Kilmer! Washington is now out of timeouts. This could be the last play. Kilmer is back to pass. He's in trouble. He's trying to shake loose. He's wrapped up by Stanfield and Dan Herder. Down he goes, and that's it. Finally, it had ended. Emotion spent, the Redskins realized, as had Miami the year before, that reaching this game meant nothing without final victory. Washington's powder blue Sunday was now backlit with failure, while Miami's year of doubt had ended in the sun. Don Shula had wiped clean a clouded past. His team had established an incredible precedent for the future. Don Shula and the Miami Dolphins, undefeated champions of the world.